Here's a quick walkthrough of FiddleWax Pro. This is the screen you'll see the first time you get started. Note that the interface is broken up into four sections. The top has parameters. The left is drum samples. The right is all about looping. And below that you have the core of the instrument, which gives you tonal notes and chords. You also want to check out this button. This takes you to the guidebook uh, with more details about all the things I'm about to go over. So when you're done, just hit OK. We'll start again at the top. You have your drum kit all the way over to the left. You have your key, scales such as blues, pentatonic. You have tempo and beats per minute. Get a time signature, effects such as filter, just tap on it, and then you can uh, change the parameters. Tap again to get back out. I'm going to go ahead and start recording the session, and that way we have clean audio for later. We'll go back to the drum section. Here, let's just play a few. Uh, you'll note that the closer to the center you play, the louder each sample sounds. And it's all multi-touch, so use all your fingers. Back to the loop side. Start one, get a quick track going. Just press it again when you're done. And to stop the loop, just press the X. To play, just hit play. Or if you want to restart the loop, just tap it again. Now if you have multiple loops recorded, so we'll just record something over that one we just did. Okay. Now if I want to undo, I just press the record button and hold it down until it changes color. And we're back. Now moving on to the bottom section of the instrument, you can select which instrument you want to play. Right now we have a piano. In the top here you have chords. You'll notice we have suspended chords. A six chord, a seven chord, a nine chord. A minor or major of the root chord here, which is helpful for modulation between keys. We also have minus five and plus five. These are related by the circle of fifths. If you want to modulate down or up a fifth, you'll notice the chords with the same notes light up as you play to give you context. You can also move chromatically down a half step or up a half step with the flat or sharp. And then below that we have the notes. So we have a piano here. And the row below that is the scale you've selected to go along with the key. Um, here it's set as a pentatonic. We can change that to the blue scale or the augmented scale. or maybe back to the pentatonic. Now the final row is actually an auto harp or chorded zither, where all of the notes are based on the chord you've selected above. So like a C or a D minor chord, E minor, back to the C. And this is a great way to make melodies or harmonies where you want to base everything off of a particular chord. Now if you don't want the chord to sound, you can press this button. Now the chord doesn't sound, but it still selects the same notes uh, when you play in the bottom row. You can also enlarge the whole playing area by pressing this button. This is helpful if you're working on something that's a bit more tedious and you need some extra space. It also lets you get higher or lower on the keyboard if you need to kind of get to the extremes, like really high or really low. And that's great for putting in something like a bass line. Get this going again. Start a new loop. And to get back out, just press that button again. Now you notice if we head back up to the looper, it's just a little bit out of sync. So we can go up to the quantization. And here it seems like everything falls within kind of quarter of a beat. So we'll start there. Okay, now things feel pretty locked in. Could go even farther, say just twice per beat. Not too different, but a little, a little more stiff. We can swing it and go the other way. To 
very different feel now. Okay, let's go back to the fourth of a beat. All right, now let's add some effects on top of it. Come up here, select some reverb. Maybe a little bit of filter. Just slide that back and forth. And then change the tempo. Okay, let's add another part on top of that. Oh, so you can tell that locked in a little bit because of the quantization. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn that off. There we go, you can hear that slide. It's a bit more analog. Okay, so that's the basics of the walkthrough. Some other things to note, uh, MIDI is up here. You can just tap on that. Audio Bus and InterApp Audio are available by just connecting with the other app, so that's pretty straightforward. And when you're all done, just come back up to the top, uh, tap on the session recorder again, and that'll take you to the file list. Here you can see a whole list of recent recordings. You can hit play if you want to kind of scrub through and listen to them. Uh, the delete button's over here if you record some gibberish and want to get rid of it. And if you just hit share, you can easily send an email with your files. You can upload it with other apps such as Google Drive or Dropbox, or even share it directly with SoundCloud by just tapping. Then just fill in your details, hit upload and share, and it will send your file. So that's about it. If you have any questions, definitely check out the FiddleWax Pro guidebook at fiddlewax.com and let us know what you think. Cheers.